Hello guys. I know this is a bit of a weird sort of look. I would never normally wear a shirt and a hat, but I've got really, really greasy hair and it's just not worth it because I haven't been able to wash it properly for a while. It's all greasy and it's all fluffy from where I've been sleeping and it's just, just a nightmare. So it's just easier to just put a hat on. But what is this video? This is my one week post top surgery video. Uh, I can't believe it's been a week already. I thought I would use this time to talk about how the surgery went, how the first week of recovery is going, what have I noticed, stuff like that. So the surgery went really well. The surgery was about four hours long, which was a bit longer than was expected, but well, I mean, I, I didn't notice. <laughs> I didn't notice that it was longer than expected. It was only when I came back out into recovery that I noticed that it was longer than expected. But it was good. I was there overnight, so I straight like I was quite all right. I've seen videos of like people who come back round after the surgery, and they're sort of like they're still a bit sort of like high, and they're like they're kind of drunk in a way, and it's all like they're not making sense, they're very run down, they're very tired and then some people throw up and all of this stuff but I didn't have any of that, I was expecting it I was expecting to just puke my guts up and like to feel really drowsy and whatnot but I was I was fine, I guess I'm a lucky one so I woke up, I had a jacket potato for dinner which I ate uh, I had to have some assistance getting to the bathroom throughout the night because I had drains in so they would come with me, take the drains in, I'd go bathroom them and help me back and I kind of spent the first couple of days in bed. So the next day I was obviously there, I had my drains removed, I think I had my drains removed at about 3 o'clock, 2, 3 o'clock. And then they said we want you to stay around for a few hours just to make sure that there's no complications there. So I stayed, uh, there was no complications, so let me go. So we went home that night, got home about half past 10 at night, because it was a very, very long drive. Got home, had some dinner, got into bed. Then the next day was sleep, wake up for a few hours, nap, wake up for a few hours, sleep. So the first few days there was quite a few naps. I tried getting up a bit more because you want to be a bit, little bit active but not too active. So I started like walking up and down the stairs a bit more. And I tried sort of just doing stuff, trying to do normal things. But because I was still very tired and still recovering, there was a lot of sleeping involved. And gradually as the days went on, it got easier, I became more active, I'm now doing a lot more walking, so I'm walking around the house a bit more, I am I actually went out the other day as well, so I went and took a day trip and we were walking there, so I can walk, I just can't walk very fast, or very far, but I can walk, and I'm going outside a bit more to try and get some fresh air, but not too much, because obviously I don't want to get sick and stuff, but meh. So, pain-wise, how has it been? Uh, I was sent home from the hospital and I was given codeine and paracetamol. I took codeine for the first four days. Yeah, first four days I took codeine. On the fourth day I started to feel a bit sick and I was just like, you know, I'm not going to take the codeine anymore. I don't need it. I don't feel any pain. I'm just not going to take the codeine. So I stopped the codeine and I was just taking paracetamol and I've taken, like I took paracetamol at regular intervals at first. So I think it was just like every four hours or so. And now I only take paracetamol if I feel any pain anywhere. It worked out better than I expected because I didn't want to stay on the codeine for very long because the codeine can react with you and make you feel sick or make you hallucinate and stuff. So I didn't want to spend too much time on codeine. So the fact that I only spent four days is great. The recovery that my doctor has told me to do. So each surgeon is different. Each surgeon will prefer their own different things and they've got their own sort of routines that they would use. So, for example, some people will probably be, be, like, you'll have your surgery and you will go home with a surgical binder. And some places will be like, we'll give you two binders, you can change the binders around, you can have 15 minutes of no binding each day, or something like that. But my doctor said that he wants me to have the binder and keep the binder on for the whole time. So, binder stays on for the whole two weeks until I see him again. I don't think it's necessarily bandages that I've got. I think I've got like sort of like these really sort of big like plaster type things. So I've got gauze that's been taped on. So I don't think it's necessarily like I'm bandaged up. But I've got that underneath the binder. But I can't take the binder off so that the band I'll call them bandages for now, so the bandages don't get ruined. And it, it's fine, it's made it 
it's made it easier and it's also quite complicated as well. So it's easier because I don't have to worry about changing the binder because there was a part where I was going to be alone and that would have been very difficult to change a binder by myself. So that's good because I don't have to worry about that. I don't have to worry about ruining the dressing, I don't have to worry. That It's a simple task. It literally is hospital set it up and I just leave it alone, which is nice and simple and easy. But there's also the complication of because I'm wearing this binder for two weeks, it's making me very itchy, it's quite uncomfortable and it's, it's really difficult going to sleep with a binder because I never used to sleep in a binder, so that's something new. But it's, it's nice, I can sort of... I feel that my chest is smaller. I know there's a binder there, so I like. It's one of the things of like I can. I don't know, but I also know because I'm very much aware of just like oh, it's a binder. A binder's making me thin, but I also know I've had surgery. I'm in that complicated point of. I know I've had surgery, but I haven't seen it, so I don't know what it looks like, and stuff like that. One of my biggest fears at the moment is from where I'm moving about and stuff. So as time's gone by, I'm getting more able. So for example, I can fit my arms up here. And that's when I start feeling, sort of, not even pain, just sort of tight. And I'll get to there and I'll just go, oh, maybe I should stop because I don't know how well I've healed. But I, I can move, I'm a bit more free-flowing and stuff, and I'm more active. But every so often I'll do something, I'll stretch out and I'll feel it and I'll just panic and I'll just go, oh, God. Because I'm really worried that I'm going to pull the stitches or I'm going to lose a nipple or something like that. So I'm just in sort of sheer panic at the moment. So every so often when I feel sort of like tight pulling or whatever I'm sort of just peeking into the little binder bit just to see if I can see any bleeding or anything like that I haven't seen anything like that but it's one of the things of like I don't fully know what to look for I don't know like if a nipple has died for example I don't know what that looks like until we have the bandages off so I'm a bit I'm still feeling a bit cautious and a bit sensitive because I have no idea how well it's healed or anything like that this is going to be the sort of this is a weird moment I have never taken my shirt off for the internet, but just for all purposes sake, I thought I would, and you guys can sort of see what I'm working with. So this is me. This is such a weird concept, but this is my binder. <laughs> this is my binder that's been issued by the hospital. It's pretty decent. It's a nice binder. It's a Velcro one. And it's wrapped round up at the back, and it's quite. It's not unbearably tight, but it's sort of tight enough that I can feel the compression which should help with the bruising but not tight enough that I'm struggling. So what have I noticed? So pretty much my worst case of bruising is on this side. I don't know if you can see it but I've got a bit of bruising up here. This side is fine bruise wise, there's nothing up here. But this is, gets, this is where it gets interesting. So this side is bruised. When I had the drains this was my worst one drain wise so it drained the most. But this is the arm that sort of is most mobile and feels fine. Whereas this one's a bit tighter and stiffer and I can feel more pain on this side than this side which is really weird because I thought this would be my worst side but I'm wearing the shirts because they're easy to get on and off at the moment because despite the fact that I have got movement I'm still here and that means it's quite difficult to put shirts on. I'm hoping over the next few days I can start wearing t-shirts again because that feels a lot more normal than going out in a shirt and joggers and a hat. I'm really looking forward to when I get to have this binder taken off I'm a little bit worried about how the bandages are because they're almost like a plaster and I'm feeling a bit sensitive on my chest so I'm hoping it's not just going to be like a quick rip off thing. I'm hoping that it won't be so painful. I'm looking forward to having the binder off, having the bandages removed, seeing what my chest looks like because I've, I've no idea. I'm trying to sort of like picture it and figure it out but because I can't see anything and I can't like, I feel stuff but it doesn't quite make sense yet. But yeah, so that's one week post-op. If you have any questions about my surgery or, well, just, I can answer about my surgery. I can't necessarily answer about other types of surgery because different surgeons and different surgeries are different. Everyone has their preferences and stuff. But I will answer what I can, as I can, when I can. If you're interested in watching my whole transition video, I will leave a playlist down below. If you're only interested in the whole top surgery side of things, I will leave that playlist down below as well so you can watch specifically top surgery stuff. They will be in the trans video playlist as well, but if you only want top surgery, at least you can sort of select that as an option. But thank you guys for following me. Please like, subscribe, whatever you want. And I will see you probably in a week's time when I have my bandages and stuff taken off. But bye! -ya.